Hello, and today we're going to be reviewing the Ryobi RY121850 VNM 18 volt brushless power cleaner. So let's go ahead and get started. Starting off at the bottom of the tool, we have the water resistant battery enclosure. The battery slot inside the water resistant housing is a standard 18 volt battery slot for Ryobi, and the battery locks into place nice and securely with pretty much no wiggle room. Overall, the water resistant housing does its job, and I guess some people will appreciate this feature. For me personally, I live basically in the middle of the desert, and I don't really use this around any water source that would well require a waterproof housing so I would take it or leave it I, I'm glad they include it because more options are almost always better than less options so it gets a pass here and next up we have the rubberized grip now the rubberized grip on this particular tool does feel a little bit higher quality than what you'd find on the cheaper brush model and overall it does appear to have a more uh, robust texture to it and it feels nice and comfortable in my hands now I have a little bit smaller sized hands and so it definitely feels maybe a little bit bigger than I personally would like but it's still not horrible and I still think that most people will find it a comfortable tool to hold so it gets a pass and directly above the grip on the rear of the tool, we have the mode selection button. The mode selection button is a button that you'll press in order to circle through the different modes. Low is number one, medium is number two, and high is number three. Overall, the button works just fine, and I don't see any major issues with it. I probably would have made it a little bit bigger if it had been up to me, but it wasn't, and it does its job, so it still gets a pass. And next up we have the tr the safety. Now the safety is built into the grip on this particular tool and it does a good job of, well, locking the trigger into place when the safety is engaged. And with this particular tool having an open grip, unlike the previous generation which had the enclosed uh, grip, you're definitely going to be needing that safety for when you're transporting the tool when the battery is in the tool and, well, quite frankly, you don't want your tool to accidentally running when it's being transported in the back of your truck or vehicle or whatever ha else have you. So it gets a pass. And next up we have the trigger. Now the trigger on this particular tool is a single speed trigger so it's basically just an on off switch that you hold. Overall it does its job just fine. There is a little bit of a delay before the motor starts to turn and I would have preferred that to be a little bit more minimized but it's not a deal breaker and it's not really that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things so it gets a pass. Overall the trigger feels nice and comfortable. It slides easily and there really is nothing other than that delay that is wrong with it. So yeah moving on. And next up we have the new upgraded intake for the hose or accessories for pulling the water into the tool. Overall on the previous generation it was made out of plastic and while it worked it was prone to breaking and you'd have to replace it if you uh, ended up breaking it. Overall on this new generation of tool they've up changed it from plastic to metal and I think that's definitely a good upgrade. Overall it seems to be much more secure when holding the accessories and it seems to also work with third party accessories such as quick connect systems that you might find at your local Walmart better than what you would find on the previous generation. So overall the upgrade is definitely a welcome improvement and definitely worth the added price in my opinion so it gets a pass. And next up we have the wand assembly. Now the wand assembly on this particular tool is different than on the previous generations of this tool and I'll explain how. On this particular tool there is a quick connect directly on the body of the tool as well as a quick connect at the end of the wand. The wand itself has been upgraded from being plastic to metal and while it isn't as long as on the brushed model it is more sturdy and more robust and definitely feels more professional. Overall the design is definitely superior and I definitely like using it more than the plastic ones even if I do use some usable length. And because of the design with having quick connects on the body and at the end of the wand that means that you'll be able to directly plug in the turret nozzle attachment directly into the body or onto the wand versus the previous generations of the uh, tool which you could only plug it directly into the end of the first wand. So overall the design of the wand system on this particular tool definitely feels more professional and just is overall better in my opinion. So yeah, it gets a pass. Although I personally would have preferred them to re redesign the nozzle turret a little bit to be a little bit more similar to how Works has theirs. I think Works has more options and I really do like having a lot of the options that the Works has more than the not options that Ryobi has. So yeah. And next up we have the 20 foot siphon hose. Overall the 20 foot siphon hose is the exact same hose that was included with their cheaper brushed version or their 40 volt version and it does its job just fine. It has a filter at the end of the hose in order to keep out large particular matter from entering the tool and destroying the tool and you can remove it by unscrewing it and so it does its job just fine. The float on the tool is adjustable up and down to prevent the 
filter housing from sinking into the mud at the bottom of the lake or river wherever you're drawing your water from and so this is also a good feature I guess I've never actually used it so I don't know and then moving up we have the quick connect at the top of the tool for connecting directly into the tool it's the, exactly the same as on the cheaper version and it does its job just fine and then you have the bucket clip for when you're using it with a bucket in order to keep the hose inside the bucket so overall the tool hose or the hose itself works just fine I don't really see any major issues with it like I said earlier it's the exact same hose that comes with the cheaper brushed version so yeah moving on and next up we have the ball adapter the ball adapter will allow you to use this tool with a two liter soda bottle and overall it is a welcome feature and something that I am glad that they included with this particular model so yeah moving on without a battery the tool weighs 1906 grams or a little over four pounds and with a four amp hour battery, it weighs 2,630 grams or almost six pounds. So it's a little bit on the heavier side, but it's still manageable. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the tool in operation. Overall, this tool in operation, well, it does have more power than the standard model of the Easy Clean, which pops out PSI pressure around 320 PSI. And this one has around 600 PSI, so it is better in that regard. However, if you are still looking for a power washer level of tool, this is not going to fulfill your needs. This is a power cleaner, it's not a power washer. But as long as you know what to expect, I think most people will be thrilled with this particular tool. It does a good job with the quick and easy cleanups like cleaning off your trimmer after weed whacking, or the bomb of your mower, or maybe some of those bird poops on your freshly washed car. You can use this to wash your car, it's just going to take you a long time. And I personally would rec only recommend it for really rinsing off your car after washing it by hand with a sponge and a soapy bucket of water. But that's just my own personal thoughts on that matter. Overall, this particular tool is fairly easy to use, and I don't really think there are ma any major downsides to this. Now, a lot of people, when they start looking at these easy cleans, talk about how their garden hose or their hose out uh, of their house has just as much pressure, and that may be the case, but I don't really think that's the point of this tool. I view this tool as a way of having a pressurized water source where you normally wouldn't have a pressurized water source or a way to conserve water if you live in an area where water isn't readily available, aka where I live. So overall, I really do think that this particular tool is a good tool to consider for a lot of different reasons. And like I said earlier, if you're looking for a power washer, look for a power washer. This isn't a power washer, it's a power cleaner. But as long as you keep that in mind, I really don't think you're going to have any major complaints. So yeah. Now when you start to compare this against the previous generation, it really is better in just about every single aspect. About the biggest downside to the previous generation was the fact that, well, it wasn't exactly the most robust tool. It had a lot of good options and it wasn't going to break easily, but it just didn't feel like a professional quality tool. This definitely feels much more uh, professional in a lot of different regards. Overall, the, the metal wand feels like a major improvement, the metal intake feels like a major improvement, and just overall the feel of it is just better. I think that Ryobi is doing a good job with their HP lineup. I just don't think that they always hit it exactly on the head, but I think they got this one just about perfect. As a matter of fact, the only real downside that, that I can see with this particular tool, at least when it comes to improvements over the previous generation, is the fact that they decided to include the exact same nozzle settings with the nozzle. They did change the way that the nozzle worked or how you could plug it directly into the body of the tool, and I think that's definitely a welcome improvement. But I think if they had decided to add a couple of additional settings, like maybe a 0 degree, a 25 degree, or maybe a 40 degree setting, that would definitely have been a major and welcome improvement. But they didn't, and we got the exact same nozzle head. So that is a little bit of a downside in my opinion. But other than that, the increased price is definitely well justified for this particular tool over the previous generation, especially since the previous generation has gone up $20 since I originally bought it. So yeah. Now, is this going to be the best power cleaner on the market? Well, it's definitely one of the more powerful power cleaners on the market. I think the only other ones that really are in this category are the 40 volt Ryobi or the Cobalt 40 volt. And those are both rated at 600 PSI. DeWalt has a 550 PSI rated one, but I've heard some mixed reviews on that one. But then again, there's always mixed reviews on all these. I find myself using the Works Hydroshaw a lot of the time, even though it's not as powerful, simply because of those additional nozzle settings. And when you're working around plants and animals, those additional nozzle settings are very useful. Now, would I recommend this particular power cleaner? Absolutely. But let's go through the lists of uh, pros and cons real quick, and we'll recap at the end.
And the first pro is brushless. Being brushless means that you'll have added power or longer runtime, and you'll get that beautiful shiny little sticker that says brushless. So this is a pro in my opinion. Powerful. This is definitely one of the more powerful power cleaners on the market, and it's definitely something to consider. It's not as powerful as a power washer, but we've already been over that. So yeah, moving on. 18 volt. 18 volt is definitely my favorite voltage when it comes to the handheld power tools. 12 volt you can't find adapters for and well for 24 volt while being more powerful you also can't find adapters for. So 18 volt and 20 volt battery systems are definitely the way I typically go for for a handheld power tool and because you can find adapters and you can adapt batteries over from different brands so this is definitely a pro in my opinion. Better wand. Overall, the wand on this particular tool is just better. It's not as long, but it definitely feels more professional and it's more comfortable to hold and there's less flex. So in my opinion, this is definitely a pro. Modes. Overall, the modes are also another great improvement on this particular tool. When you're working around plants, when you're just spraying bugs off when, because you have annoying bugs that just showed up out of nowhere in the middle of winter, they go figure. It's nice to be able to be able to spray off those bugs with a lower power setting and not destroy the plant. So overall, I definitely enjoy having the different modes and it's definitely a welcome improvement and I'm glad that they decided to give you three modes instead of just two. So yeah, this is definitely a pro in my opinion. Metal intake. Overall, having the metal intake or the metal quick connect is definitely a welcome improvement over the plastic version. Overall, it's more robust and it definitely seems to be more compatible with third party quick connects. So I definitely enjoy having it and it's definitely a pro in my opinion. And the first meh and only meh is the battery housing. Overall, the battery housing is going to be useful for certain individuals, but for me personally, I just find it adds too much bulk to the tool, and I don't really enjoy using it all that much. I don't really think it's something that's necessarily needed for most people. If you work around water, I can see how it would be a valuable asset, but for me personally, I really don't need it. So yeah, moving on. And the only real con I can think of on this particular tool would be the nozzles. Now the nozzle works just fine and they definitely did some improvements over the previous generation where you can directly plug the turret nozzle into the body of the tool and that is good. I just would have preferred having some additional options, maybe a 40 degree or 25 degree as well as having the zero degree which is non-negotiable for me as far as I'm concerned. I would rather have the zero degree than the turbo setting and so that's why I consider this to be a little bit of a con. I think it definitely would have been a better or more rounded out tool and just about a perfect tool as far as I'm concerned if they had decided to add some additional nozzle settings but they didn't do that and it's still a good tool and it still does its job just fine I just would have preferred having the additional settings so yeah and final thoughts on this particular power cleaner overall this particular power cleaner is definitely a good improvement over the previous generation or the brush version of this particular tool would I buy this one over the brush version absolutely I definitely think it's worth the increased price of $20 and I think that you're going to be much happier with this one than the cheaper version as long as you remember that it's a power cleaner. I hate that I have to say this all the time, but there's a lot of people that end up buying these particular tools thinking that they're power washers. They're not, they're power cleaners. You have to view it as a water source that where you wouldn't typically have a water source. That's the best way of putting it in my opinion. So quite frankly, I really do like this tool. I use it quite often, although I still use my Works Hydro Shot a lot. And really, I don't really see any major issues with this particular tool, other than the fact that I don't really particularly like the nozzle that they include with it. But there's nothing wrong with it, and it does its job just fine. So would I recommend it? Absolutely. It comes highly recommended for anybody who is looking for a power cleaner. And that is it for this particular video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. God bless.